What do you think the overall tension is like at the moment? How difficult is it for companies, technology companies in particular, to think that they can make inroads into China and vice versa? Tensions are incredibly high, that is uh, for sure. And it is one of the leading issues that foreign investors, not even just American ones, obviously Chinese investors in the United States as well, point to geopolitical tensions, U.S.-China relations being at a real low point, thereby causing additional risk for companies as they think about expanding in the China market or, of course, Chinese investors having any presence in the U.S. market. These risks are growing. They're proliferating around the breadth of concerns between the U.S. and China on bilateral relations, on global issues, the war in Ukraine, Taiwan, human rights, and as you asked about, a technology competition. And so the stakes are quite high uh, for companies as they're trying to navigate these geopolitical tensions that are beyond their control, but of course impact their bottom line and their business. We have, of course, been thinking about the ramifications for users, for companies. Just from the perspective of the CEO, Sho Chu, anything more you think he could have said? Anything more that you were listening for that could have dialed back any of this? I, I think that he did not have a good day yesterday. I think it would have been difficult for just about anybody in five plus hours of testimony to, to be fully successful. But I think at, at the end of the day, he really didn't convince any stakeholders, stakeholders which were going to be very difficult to convince in the first place, that um, Beijing's continued interaction with TikTok, a subsidiary of ByteDance, has ended has been finished. I think what the CEO is trying to say is that the company has invested over a billion dollars to try to put in place firewalls, localize data, make sure that coders aren't working from Beijing uh, for a subsidiary here in the United States. But he couldn't prove a negative. He couldn't prove that in no way will the Chinese government be able to influence the parent company yeah today or in the future unless there's a separation. Amy, talk to us about that separation because there was perhaps not only a difficult reception in the United States from lawmakers, but also Chinese lawmakers hadn't made Shochu's hand that much easier ahead of his testimony because we'd heard from the Commerce Secretary over there saying, look, any sort of separation is not going to fly with us. Exactly. That was very difficult because that uh, that news from Chinese Ministry of Commerce came out the morning that Shochu was testifying. And that news was exactly as you said, the Chinese government will likely firmly oppose any kind of divestiture uh, from ByteDance of its subsidiary TikTok. And so that was going to make Show Tuesdays much, much more difficult, especially since, you know, TikTok has been in negotiations with CFIUS, with U.S. administration officials. And to avoid a ban, the likely way forward was going to be a divestiture mm. of uh, ByteDance from TikTok. Now, with the Chinese government saying that is not possible, uh, the U.S. government has to think long and hard of what are its next steps here. Yeah. They have the option of an executive order taking action, of CFIUS saying that a ban should go in effect, presenting it to President Biden uh, to either accept or reject unless a divestiture happens, or there could be a congressional route here. I think for the administration, one of the concerns is, of course, when the Trump administration tried to ban TikTok, it faced judicial uh, oversight, of course, and an overturn of the ban. Yeah. And so that is why this bipartisan piece of legislation known as the Restrict Act that was introduced in the Senate uh, would give the authority uh, of the Commerce Secretary working with the Treasury Secretary in cases of national security where CFIUS has reviewed the bill that would give the administration the ability to look at these kinds of platforms and take action to restrict them in the United States if there were concerns. And, and let's just look process. for a moment, Amy, at <laughs> what our viewers, our audience, think about what that would do to relations if it happened. We went to a poll and said, you know, if it gets banned in the US, what impact will it have? Only 16% thought it would be catastrophic, but 47%, interestingly, said no impact. What do you make of the fact that this dra nothing's going to happen overnight? 
Is there no impact in the interim? And even if we get some sort of ban between tensions of the US and China, educate us here. Well, I think I would uh, vote in that poll that, of course, it would have an impact, but the impact wouldn't be overwhelming. So I, I do think your viewers are, are right on that because the U.S. and China face so many other challenges. But certainly for trade and investment ties, this would send a strong signal uh, that the U.S. government is looking at a Chinese-owned platform differently than it's looking at regulating even the American platforms that many of those senators yesterday talked about needing uh, better regulation. And so this is not an either or as far as should these should privacy be enhanced, protecting American citizens, should they be in a better position that way through U.S. legislative action. But back to the question about U.S.-China relations, this is one of many things that is weighing on the bilateral relationship. And I think both leaders in Beijing and I know leaders yeah. in Washington, D.C., are trying very hard to tamp down tensions as we deal with issues like uh, the war in Ukraine, tensions over Taiwan. Yes. But in trade and investment uh, you know, channels, technology competition is going to continue to ramp up.